Well, Herschel Daniels, the recording is in progress. You have your share screen, so now's your time to give us the introduction to, to this portion. This portion is going to, okay, uh, cover the Indigenous Peoples Plan. And the Indigenous Peoples Plan is a plan of action that is part of our work at the United Nations and the creation on April 29th of the Indigenous Peoples Alliance, which is to be African Americans with partnership with Native Americans and Indigenous people of the Americas, okay, Indigenous people of Africa, Indigenous people of Asia and Indigenous people of Oceania as our principal focus. There are other indigenous people in Europe that is not our focus. The alliance that we created said that our headquarters would be 477 West 142nd Street in New York City which is at an intersection of American history on the first floor. That is based on Queen Mother, Dr. Dolores Blakely, having both a African-American, African, Native American tripartite heritage. And the work that she's done to make this the first floor of focus of our work in New York City as our headquarters. Now, the Indigenous Peoples Alliance is to be made up of over 4 billion potential members, starting with the over 30 million people of African descent here in the United States who qualify as an indigenous person under the rules of the United Nations. It includes in Native Americans over, uh, I used the, the old term 4.7 million people, it's actually 7.7 .7 million Native Americans. Indigenous people of the Americas Okay, it's over 70 million people. Indigenous people of Africa, over 1.2 billion. Indigenous people of Asia, over 2 billion people. And indigenous people of Oceania, over 41 million people. This is the proposed infrastructure and the graphics that I'm using for this. Does everybody understand? What do you think of the graphics? Let's, let's get some feedback first. What do you think of the graphic? I think it's good. Yes, it's clean and it's informative. All right. So currently, in the Indigenous Peoples uh, of the United Nations Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues, of those 4 billion people, only 375 million only 375 million of them are represented in the United Nations currently. And we're, we're on the call from last night, so if you want to come on, you can come on la uh, from the call last night. So the whole idea next year is to add people. And to add people, okay, is to create a unified, cohesive, cooperative global economic plan that's based on a secure digital environment and command, control, communications, computing, connectivity, cryptology, and cash transactions for the world's indigenous people first structured as part of a permanent forum on people of African descent, because the African Union 
earlier this year said of the five tasks that they assigned to us as people of African descent that they wanted us this month <coughs> to give them a proposal. And so we have a proposal in creation that we will be giving them by uh, August 24th, which is the African Diaspora Financial Framework. And so by the 21st, uh, sorry, by the 25th of this month, the whole idea is, is that we will have created a cooperative, the Indigenous Peoples Alliance Cooperative, that would join by August 25th, the National Community Reinvestment Coalition, as well as the cooperative movement worldwide, in line with the ethical values of honesty, openness, corporate social responsibility, and caring for others. Questions? After each page, I'm going to ask that. Okay, questions. Hearing none, I will go on. Everybody knows what a cooperative is, right? All right. So the cross cutting topics covered by the cooperative is creating intergenerational wealth, creating international trade program with African nations, creating safe communities, creating affordable, sustainable housing, creating smart living coalitions, implementing erasing the digital divide programming, providing best of class healthcare solutions, integrating next generation civic infrastructure, addressing systematic racism, economic injustice, and advancing global human rights while creating a next generation workforce. Questions, additions that should be added. Now I know that each one of these have an education component to it. I just, um, I know like with the UNESCO, there's the education and science and all that, but where is there an area specific with that, or am I missing it? I'm trying to go through it quickly as you're reading it. Okay, yeah. So education is one of those cross-cutting topics in each one of those. So that's one of those cross-cutting topics that uh, 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 covers the, think of these as silos, and think of education as a horizontal strip that goes across all the silos. So, and maybe addressing systemic racism, knowing our history, you know, and, and uh, correcting uh, the misinformation or whatever, that would probably fall in there as well. Yeah, well, addressing systematic racism, economic injustice, and advancing global human rights. What we use is the universal periodic review as a tool, but yes, uh, uh, addressing that. So, uh, we're actually part of a, uh, of a, uh, coalition of groups that are, are addressing that uh, issue. There's about a hundred of us in that group that address it from the whole idea of addressing systematic racism and economic justice through utilization of the law. And uh, I'll, I'll gladly uh, uh, give you, you know, the connections to it. We look forward uh, to your comments. In terms of education, just let's just throw this up, but I know just in listening to you and Michael that you have extensive knowledge around history that kind of goes beyond what the average person knows much about. So I just, uh, just like we're delving, doing a deep, deep dive into the health piece with some uh, different options. So I would hope that we would do that when it comes to um, well, so, systemic racism, but really, the, the, uh, you know, what the foundation of who we are kind of thing. Oh. So here, here's what the letter to the uh, commission will be reading next week. The letter will ask the commission, well, first it'll tell the commission, we're glad that, uh, thank you that, that you're still in existence. Uh, second, 
Uh, we will tell the commission what we did on August 25th, 2019 to set the stake uh, for what we're asking the commission to participate in this year. Uh, that, that's food for me? No, okay, great. Uh, and third, what we're, what we're doing is, is that we asking the commission to be a, a partner in going to one of uh, the USDA and to formally ask the USDA to write a $12 million check uh, for the startup of a creation of a model of the United States that focuses on agriculture from August 25th, 1619, which means all the lands that are owned at that time, except for the colony lands to create a economic model using CPAs as the core. We have one in Tulsa and we have one in uh, uh, Hamilton County as our basis to create an economic model of the United States from August 25th, 1619 through August 25th, 2019, that would create that model showing the first international business of America was agriculture. Showing that international business, the methods of management of that international business then can be quantified based on the records that are extensive so we can create a model so we could show how important people of African descent were and are. Yes, Excuse Andrew. me, Herschel. I disconnected the screen so that perhaps if you could be so kind, because this is a very extensive presentation, uh, if I could ask Elder Cox and others to put your comments in the chat as we proceed so that you can complete the entire presentation and then we can address those issues, primarily for housekeeping and time, time sensitive material for our rebroadcast. This is a very important presentation. So if I could ask your indulgence, please. Thank you. Yes, I will. Mm -hmm. All right. So that, that is the short of what we will, what we will be doing. Uh, in the letter, that's that's on the table right now, uh, as of June 9th, with the uh, USDA. Herschel, uh, yes. Could you please complete the presentation and then address that issue? Sure, I'm I'm going to finish this and then I, I will. Uh, so that's on the table right now: twelve million dollars, nine million dollars a month, hundred and twenty million dollars. Secretary can cut the check. So that's what's coming to the commission next week. So for the Indigenous Peoples Alliance Cooperative, the whole idea is to first create, it's now time to mobilize around a healthcare plan for healthcare workers, professionals and solutions worldwide, because we're, we're headed right into uh, a terrible winter, okay? And so the whole idea of creating a trillion dollar healthcare plan. There's no better time to do that than right now. And so that's one of the main functions of us creating the Indigenous Peoples Alliance Cooperative is to create a healthcare cooperative. Questions? They'll put the questions in the chat, please continue. All right, the Indigenous Peoples Alliance and a domestic uh, program. So this is an update that was given on March 20th, 2021, uh, that uh, you know, most people didn't know that uh, people, uh, Native Americans, okay, uh, are, get paid about 30 to $35 billion, depending on who is in the government uh, for a, a year, but the United States in itself is worth $270 trillion right now. Okay, and so 30 billion a year on a worth of $270 trillion is a great deal for the United States, 
It's a terrible uh, uh, deal for Native Americans. Uh, so agreed, agreed. What what will they do through Indigenous People Alliance through the United States Department of Agriculture? Well, we base it on you know what happened in November after Election Day with the National Congress for American Indians, uh, so who demanded uh, a reconciliation back to the basic fun, fun, uh, foundational principles of, upon which this country is built. Principles like justice, like equality, like liberty, like freedom, and, and freedom to just live as our ancestors have lived when time began. The, the problem is, is, is that the concept of collective ownership of the land, which is a Native American trait, which is an African uh, trait, uh, is not a European trait. And it's definitely not an American trait of uh, uh, in the 21st century of rugged capitalism. And so within that context, uh, we started to put together the Indigenous Peoples Plan Update, a capitalist-based solution for economic justice that solve, that creates peace in the hood. In this case, the hood uh, can be a Native American reservation, but as well as an urban hood with Native Americans, okay, and indigenous people while creating jobs in the hood that answers human rights questions, all done with a digital currency. So on March 4th, the Biden administration took control of the United Nations Review of Human Rights uh, from uh, the uh, previous administration. Uh, in other words, the United States last issued updates on the Human Rights uh, Review of the United States through the United Nations Review on November 12th, when the State Department responded to our unsolicited proposal called the Black Folks Plan. Now in 2021, with our partners that we're going to create a joint venture, the Indigenous Peoples Plan update. Now this update is based on the Obama-Biden presidency when there was over 300 recommendations to change human rights in the United States in 2015. So they got so many recommendations, they said, we're just gonna count it one through 10. We're gonna say what's our number one problem in human rights that the world sees all the way down to 10. And so the number one human rights problem was civil rights, ethnic and racial discrimination. Number two, criminal justice. And number three, indigenous issues. Okay. But they also say in number 10, treaties and other international human rights mechanisms. Just for your information, in 2015, when we submitted the $5 trillion solution uh, for Black folk, we also uh, submitted a $3 trillion for Africa based on the uh, Treaty of Berlin of 1885, which after World War I became American law. Could you please read all 10 of those for the audience that can't read them? Well, it's, Andrew, why don't you, you read it? Yes, number one. Civil rights, ethnic and racial discrimination. Number two, criminal justice issues. Number three, indigenous issues. Number four, national security. Number five, immigration. Number six, labor and trafficking. Number seven, economic, social and cultural rights and measures. Number eight, the environment. Number nine, domestic implementation of human rights. And number 10, and international human rights and 10 mechanisms. treaties and international human rights mechanisms. Exactly. Yes. Thank you. Next. And, and so this, this is that statement that I said the AG had of the United Nations uh, said, we started this work in 2014 with New Future Foundation because the AG of the, sec the, the Secretary General Herschel. of the United Nations Herschel, could you please complete the presentation? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm completing it. Thank you. So that the Secretary General of the United Nations has said, this work has great potential to promote and protect human rights in the darkest corners of the world. 
And so we know power concedes nothing without a demand. It never did, it never will. But we also know that it's so difficult to create something new. And so the indigenous people's plan draws on the framework as authority used by the black folks plan and embeds a superset of the work done in the creation of the agenda 2063 and the sustainable uh, development goals. So on November 12th, when we submitted our plan on November 9th and the uh, State Department responded to our unsolicited proposal, they gave us a format a format for the Indigenous Peoples Plan, okay? And so the Indigenous Peoples Plan now is a, a process that says that we can, over the next 75 years, create a trillion dollar debt assets, public-private partner solutions using the Daniels IDIQ2, which addresses the damage incurred by past and current Federal government actions is based on the president's answers to the United Nations Universal Periodic Review of the United States in 2020 and 2021, along with Executive Order 13985, officially titled Advancing Racial Equity and Support for Underserved Communities Through the Federal Government. Okay, so the president has the authority to do by himself what we are asking. He does not need Congress to pass any additional laws, okay? And so the whole idea in when you're doing this is if you take the, this saying, yeah, it's a long page, but when you get just down to it, okay, uh, it, it's a source saying that for Native Americans, no, we're not looking at the American dream and why should we? we still haven't woken up from the American nightmare. This land used to be all theirs. It isn't anymore. And so the indigenous people's plan is that wake up call for the Biden administration can do now. No congressional action needed. So we started this plan and we actually submitted in 2016 when we uh, were meeting with the State Department uh, based off of the financing for development uh, process for the sustainable development goals at the third international conference on financing for development in July 2015 in Addis Ababa. Uh, we added a, a process saying for the $1 trillion damage uh, incurred by past and current federal government racism against Native Americans. And so when we originally uh, put this together, we gave a use of proceeds for that $1 trillion uh, and we called 30 billion of it, my brother's keeper and a Native American Alliance. And so now in 2021, this is the Indigenous Peoples Alliance Cooperative Capitalization. So out of this funds, there will be over a hundred and a billion dollars or 10% of this funds that will be available to indigenous people uh, internationally uh, for in, in the Americas, uh, for those uh, people uh, uh, who are Native Americans, okay, yes, domestically, but also for those who are indigenous people who are here in America. And by our Pew figures, it's somewhere around 10 million people currently who are indigenous people who are uh, from the Americas who are here and are undocumented. And so through the whole idea of, uh, in support of people of African descent in the Indigenous Peoples Alliance, uh, this was a special focus now, remember, when we were putting this together, uh, we're five days into the permanent form. When we were putting this together, starting on uh, April 10th, we were hoping for the creation in May of the permanent uh, form for African uh, uh, people of African descent. That was the schedule. Uh, I spoke at the United Nations uh, on April 9th. And as part of this work, well, it, it, did, it didn't look like that was gonna happen. 
So what we made sure that we included that the update of our 2015 work of $5 trillion at the United States Universal Periodic Review uh, on uh, uh, 2015 and the meeting with the State Department in 2016, uh, that uh, when the President uh, Biden uh, um, was then vice president and that the United States decided not to do the deal uh, because in terms of that, we did not have agreements with the banks to show them what the deal looked like. We were still negotiating those when we had the meeting with the State Department. We did not get our first major agreement with us as a signature until November 18th, uh, 2016, okay? And so uh, what we did is we updated that, okay? Uh, based on the meeting with the State Department, based on the, uh, when President Trump said in remarks at the 2019 National Historic Black Colleges and Universities Week Conference on September 10th, 2019, the first and highest duty of government is to take care of its own citizens. African-Americans built this nation through generations of blood, sweat, and tears. And you, like all our citizens, are entitled to a government that puts your needs, your interests, and your families first. So we said that, look, this is what he said. We were holding him accountable. We're going to meet, okay, next year with the uh, State Department to do an update. And we're gonna do it because we agree with Dr. Martin Luther King, who said, Freedom is never voluntary given by the oppressor. It must be demanded by the oppressed. And so when we did this, we had already done the background and put it into the United Nations uh, as civil society uh, for groups of, uh, who had done data for racial justice submissions. Uh, we were one of the groups, Friends of the African Union here, uh, that submitted and the countries that submitted uh, Bolivia, Poland, Sweden, Guyana, Mexico, Mali, Colombia, and Guatemala were among the countries who submitted. And so this universal periodic review has a process every four and a half year cycle. So we're in the third cycle of the universal periodic review of the United States right now. And so the originators of this, okay, is Queen Mother, Dr. Dolores Blakely and New Future Foundation and Friends of the African Union. And together, it's a process that is accepted by the US government, even the Trump administration decided to participate in the Universal Periodic Review. And we submitted two documents in the process, one on the solution for black folks, and we call it the Black Folks Plan, and two, a solution for injustice for women, judges, and the school to prison pipeline. And so when I said that the United States, the Biden administration took over for uh, March, uh, the acting assistant secretary of state for democracy, human rights and labor uh, spoke at uh, Geneva on the uh, review of the Universal Periodic Review to give the basis for the Trump administration, excuse me, for the Biden administration, uh, from the Trump administration. Then on the 17th of May, okay, uh, that the, the United Nations Human Rights Council wrote to uh, okay, so the Secretary of State and by the way, the uh, Biden administration has now issued an open invitation to the Human Rights Council to come to the United States. So in terms of uh, a fundamental issue of the Indigenous People's Alliance is to talk about uh, food and food in terms of, you know, if you don't uh, able to feed yourself, then anything else that people are talking about uh, goes uh, by the wayside. And so here in America, there is funds for black farmers to restart black farming in America on a major scale. In other words, we're down to less than 50,000 black farmers, where in 1920, we used to have 900,000. 
according to the census. And so we lost $120 billion worth of assets uh, during that period from 1920 to 2018. Now, this is not my saying, this is a tough study. So what we started this year off is creating the seven tiers of the Black Folks Plan for Black Farmers that uses three sets of funds, funds from the American Rescue Plan Act, funds from the farm credit system, and over $298 billion in federal reserve bank-based community benefit agreements. So the uh, poor people who are indigenous people uh, through the created uh, plan of people of African descent. And so our aim is to end poverty in the country with a focus on Native American community, second only to the black community and then people of color. And again, I refer back to executive order 13985, okay? And so the founding members of our organization, Friends of the African Union, African Diaspora Directorate, started the International Association for People with Disabilities, okay, uh, through which uh, the International okay, People's Alliance will serve the world's over 500 million indigenous people with disabilities, okay, from a headquarters in Lawton, Oklahoma, all right? And so, uh, we were uh, working, this was our original agreement between Cash Community Development and Friends of the African Union uh, to work out of uh, uh, our agreement in uh, uh, Fort Coffee, Oklahoma. And so the creation of the Indigenous People Alliance, real estate development, farming, livestock and fishing, food processing and manufacture, food service and retail sales and franchises. Okay, now, uh, again, this, this is in the process uh, of change uh, because Andrew has just closed the window. <laughs> so it's in the process of change. All right. I didn't uh, intend to close the window. I apologize. Please go right ahead. All right. Technical glitch uh, on my part. <laughs> So the whole idea where, where we're going from this is based on the work that we, we have just completed in Tulsa, okay? And based on that work, uh, when we held uh, this uh, event, okay, I just want you to understand uh, this. We held this event in Tulsa based on the work, and this is where we last left it yesterday, based on the work out of Chilton County. And, and there was on March 22nd, there was a Zoom talk, Black Farmers to applaud the 5 billion in USDA uh, debt relief included uh, COVID stimulus law. Uh, we, we thought that the people who were holding the call had actually read the, the law, not, okay, the law that was signed on March 11th, not the bill that these senators, okay, had supported in uh, December, okay? And Senator Warnock obviously didn't get it elected until the 5th, uh, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, we were so wrong. We thought the Black Belt Justice, okay, uh, which was, uh, is headed by a lawyer, okay, uh, an environmental working group, which has lawyers and was in the Pickford, we thought that they actually had read the law, okay? And so uh, our head of our uh, chapter in uh, Chilton, okay, uh, you know, we wanted to thank the sponsors, okay? So we submitted uh, for the record, uh, this document working. But then by March 25th, uh, we actually knew uh, what, what was at, in the actual law. We actually had a four-step process. And so there was a virtual hearing. And we also knew that this gentleman is the first black head of the Agriculture Committee. Now, remember, all of the Agriculture Committee, of all American farmers, in the house, 
he's the head man, he's the chairman. This includes the money from the Foreign Agricultural Service. Okay, that's the money that the United States uses for supporting our grain exports, our livestock exports, our fishery exports, okay, and deals with all this. So he's in charge of, of the budget that was just recently passed uh, for the agriculture department in the Biden administration, all right? And in, in 1997, a group of black farmers, including uh, Bernice Acheson, uh, were part of a class action lawsuit against the USDA over the agency's discrimination against black farmers. They won that, okay? They, they put it together, they won it, okay? But they lost uh, because of over 66,000 black farmers did not get a penny. All right, uh, it, was, it was such a, a, a mess that as a matter of fact, from the original billion dollars, Congress revisited it again, put another billion dollars on the table in 2004 when Bernice was summoned to Congress to testify, okay, on why there was no notice uh, uh, on the no notice hearing. Uh, <laughs> uh, nothing came of it, okay? Uh, there, there's nothing and so now, uh, they're talking about this $5 billion in debt relief for black farmers, and they're telling a lie. The people who are talking about this are telling a lie. It does not say anything in the law about black farmers. It's, it, it says, okay, all right. Uh, unfortunately, that's in the narrative. But, you know, again, when Biden chose uh, Bill Sack. Uh, he wanted somebody at USDA with deep knowledge of department operations, okay? And so in a Zoom meeting with farmers of color, uh, he said, we saw this as an opportunity with this COVID package to begin the process of righting so many uh, wrongs. Yes, that's true, but it does not mention black farmers specifically, okay? And so when we started in terms of the creation of this in Chilton County, uh, the whole idea of this movement was to restart not only our farming here, but with our indigenous people's allies that in the basis between Black folk and Native Americans that we can go forward in terms of uh, feeding a people worldwide through the Indigenous Peoples Alliance Co-op, uh, starting based on the work uh, in uh, Chilton County and the strategic uh, partnership with a foundational historic black college and university partner uh, that I'm talking to, uh, one in Florida and one in uh, uh, Oklahoma uh, and uh, maybe other states. Uh, but it's around this man who on November 24th, 1873, uh, sat on the Agriculture Committee, the first black man to ever sit on the U.S. House Agriculture Committee. I'll stop there and uh, where we say our core education values. And so Commissioner Cox, th this is what the basis of us in our educational, whether it's academic excellence, cutting edge research, impactful international relations, lifelong learning, integrity, transparency, accountability, fiscal responsibility, inclusive diversity, a restorative justice. As part of our vision is to connect with colleges to be a premier 21st century world-class coalition with innovative programs that have global impact. And as I said at the beginning, uh, we're going to start uh, first an agriculture, food, and rural community institute uh, named after uh, Representative Richard Harvey K. Questions? All right, Andrew. Uh, thank you. Uh, comment. <clears throat> right here when we're dealing with education and I 
now see that you're dealing with at least one historically black college university. What I'm suggesting is that we expand our vision and understand that just as there are historically black colleges university, there is an association of indigenous colleges and universities as well. There is a, an association of Hispanic colleges and universities as well. If we are in fact addressing this issue from, from an indigenous people's alliance, I suggest that we connect that dot. And uh, I, I agree with you. Okay, so when we originally did this for uh, the uh, uh, permanent forum on people of African descent, uh, and we decided that we were going to expand uh, for uh, beyond just black folk. So just this format that we did at the African Diaspora Directorate for formatting the Secretariat for Agriculture Council, uh, that, that you know we, we changed this around that um, uh, Native Americans, yes, uh, Pacific Islanders, yes, Asian Americans, uh, yes, and, and each so yes, uh, what you're what you're talking about is to and this is how uh, we envisioned originally these local equity commissions would be or local, but yes, we we agree with you. Additional questions. Well, Andrew, what, what happened to all the Herschel? What happened to all the pages we're sharing about cash community and our involvement and all of that being in the indigenous people's plan? I didn't see any of those pages. Yeah, they're they're still they're still here. I, I, I went over a part of them uh, the other day. Well, let me let me ask you first, Herschel, if this is a good time to end this recording and begin another one. I like to keep this in in chunks. Yep, this is a good this is a good start. Okay, I'm gonna stop and start again. So, John, do you have uh, your uh, your copy?